This deck, like most of the decks we play here on stream, is a viewer submission at its core. I think uh, the only things we've now changed from the original submission is that we've added some Starlet Seers to the shell, and I added some Babbling Berg. Babbling Berg is one of my uh, favorite cards to play in these Ash decks, because you'll note when you look at the deck list that the only 5 plus power unit in our deck is Ash, so Babbling Berg basically gives us um, 6 virtual copies of of ash which is great and notably if we already have an ash in play it basically means babbling berg is a 3-3 that draws us a flash freeze a very powerful utility card so um our second champion in this deck is ezreal here so we're playing pnz as our second region ezreal is a self-enabling champion that levels up as you target things and then whenever he strikes the opponent's texas he creates those mystic shots for you that uh, allow you to either level him further or have a little bit more reach to fire off at your opponent's dome. One thing that's really nice about Ezreal's level mode here is they recently changed Ezreal's level mode so it only deals two damage when you play a spell if that spell is targeting something. And with Freljord, we have things like Troll Chant and Flash Freeze and Harsh Winds, so we still have burst speed cards that deal two with Ezreal in in these regions um we have things like beam and mystic shot as cheap interaction and then i've got some card advantage here at the top end of the curve with things like progress day um progress day especially is a card i've been really impressed with in other ezreal decks that i've played in the format i think there's a chance that we might want three of this to start three of this but i'm going to start on two so that when i get too clunked up on him but i think there's a possibility that like maybe the third progress day is better than the third babbling bird or something something along those lines this card this card just been impressive in general and the other ezreal mid-range decks that i've played so something i want to think about as we play i agree axiom ezreal's had uh three different iterations now and i think that his current iteration is definitely my favorite of the ones that he's gone through Urcher and Mystic Shot are both great here. I think I'm going to mulligan these two, looking for some other units. Uh, this is likely the Fearsome deck. It's a matchup where Mystic Shot really shines because it kills Mist Wraith. Ice Veil Archer does does count as targeting something for Israel. This, this levels both of our champions when we play it and target something. Just going to go ahead and pass here, bank my spell mana. If they open attacks, I'm probably going to go ahead and play Mystic Shot. I'm going to play Rhyme Thing Wolf here, because I think there's a chance they don't attack in with this. And if they attack with just this, I'll Mystic Shot it. And then next turn, I can Ice Veil Archer into this, and then eat it with this. Suppose I could also play Ezreal and generate a Mystic Shot. I mean, to be fair, Fizz protects himself from a lot of the things that, uh that kill him. So like, I don't think Fizz's lack of play is because of things like Go Hard necessarily. In fact, you could argue Fizz's ability to counter effects like that actually makes him pretty uniquely good against Go Hard. So do we get this going or do we get this going? I'm gonna try and get Ezreal going, I think. They, they do Violet Journey. Great, thanks for the follow, welcome to the channel. Blue Vader, thank you for the five months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So... Bragging if you could back it up. The question is, do I want to, like, try and save this wolf or not? I think I'm gonna... I'm gonna chill on the wolf for now. Gotcha. I, think, I think there's a chance they have Pale Cascade rolled up here. We could see them save this with that, or they could just let it die. Because this is now only one more away from leveling up.
think with this Cavern Keeper in hand, I'm just going to go ahead and pass here. Hmm. Okay, so now they don't have Pale Cascade available. So I have to decide, do I want... I think I play Ice Veil Archer here. And target that, because this play likely means they only attack with this. And then I can just, yeah, take this hit here. And now I could go ahead and play Beam and kill Kalista while they don't have Fail Cascade up. Yeah, I think Ezreal and Twisted Fate are, are really reasonable crafts. Rune, Rune Terra, unlike a lot of card games, Rune Terra doesn't really just invalidate older cards with new card releases. Rune Terra aims to have new cards get added to the format as playable, as opposed to rendering old things unplayable. So, I, I fully expect all the things that are competitive right now to remain competitive in some iteration. And Ezreal, Ezreal and Twisted Fate are both very flexible champions. A lot, of, a lot of different decks play both those cards. Deal. So, at this point, we're basically just trying to make sure I don't die to Harrowing. Is the card that my opponent could have that could, that could uh, get them back in this game. We're in a very good spot in general right now, but Harrowing can definitely pop up and get us. I don't want to try and end the game before we get to that point. Up there in the mountains, there's no such thing as yet. We see through all. When you don't have to sell booster packs, you don't have to make old cards unplayable. Big mood. Big, big mood. This is another deck where Berg only draws Ash. That is that is one of my favorite things to do, is have Berg draw Ash. Let's talk about your death. So I don't want to block I don't want to Mystic Shot one of these right now because I want this to die. I don't want this to level, I think. Is that true? Keeping my life total higher has value. Oh, she's going to level regardless because of Ephemeral. Yeah, good call. Okay, yeah, so we'll just save our life total. Thanks for pointing that out. This is fine. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Violet Journey. It's like a, like a very, very elegant solution to that type of effect. Alamo, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Boshek. Thank you for the 27 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, sure. Deal Arena? And I think rather than playing this, I'd rather just play Babylonberg out here. Want to drop up my sub and let you know I really enjoyed the Pokemon content yesterday. Keep up the good work. Thanks for the 27 months, Boshek. Yeah, I'm planning to do Pokemon once a week for the next couple of weeks still, and then there's definitely going to be a question on the next sub survey about how people feel about the Pokemon stuff. All right, and then we just play this to Frostbite here.
Oh, wow. Wow, that's brutal. That's, that's rough. I don't think Harrowing is an inherently bad card. Like, like for example, um, I think looking at that situation that just happened there and blaming Harrowing is, is incorrect. I, what I actually think should probably be the case is if there needed to be a balance level change to the fearsome deck, and I don't, I'm not opposed to that. I think the spider shouldn't be a summon effect; it should be a play effect. I think it's it's a lot a lot of the facts. Yeah, sk skitterer, skitterer being a summon effect versus the way the way they really balance around cards like Harrowing is how they dictate what is a summon versus a play, and Skitterer's effect being a summon feels strange to me from a balance perspective. Like, that 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 Harrowing there, like, just isn't a big deal at all if Skitterer doesn't make it so I can't block. Like, if I can, if I can block in that combat there, we're fine and we're in complete control of that game. I, I agree that that game felt very bad. Like that was that was a game where we had we played a ton of back and forth and then at the end it just did none of our decisions matter and they killed us. I made Skinner scheme back two. They brought back one with Harrowing and they brought back one with Kalista. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. They could have also brought back a third if they wanted to. Fly away while you can. I'm gonna block this here rather than this one because uh, they're likely a thermo beam deck being Draven Ezreal, so I don't want this to die to beam. Oh, they're ravenous block. That makes sense too. That's fine. I don't think I can endlessly take it. It's ravenous block punishes not blocking the two two though. Probably Daryl. It doesn't matter though. Didn't, didn't come close to mattering. So we lose one mana to burning it off here, but I think that's fine. Get to drop an Ezreal here and not only start generating Mystic Shots, but also trigger the Starlet Seers here. I'm gonna go ahead and spend this now rather than burning extra mana again. Get those, get those triggers into our deck here. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Does not ruffle our feathers. So, levels Ash twice, levels Ezreal twice, look okay.
I don't know, like, what problem... What problem do you think my deck has that's solved by adding by adding Field Rush to a D-Rock would be my question to you. What what issue are you solving with that change? Is the is the question to ask. Like what what matchup do you envision that change being worthwhile? Other other than it's cheeky, so let's do it. Someone had asked earlier, and I missed it because other things were going on, what do I think about landmarks as card types? I think they're fine. I think the the thing that's really important to acknowledge about landmarks that's a good thing is that landmarks specifically um, take up... I think I'm trading for, for Draven here. Uh, landmarks specifically take up a spot on your bench, which is a big deal. The, the fact that they factor into your bench management really matters. One one other thing that comes to mind about the landmarks that I think is uh, I think I think the one thing that I, I I would be kind of critical of with regards to landmarks is the fact that they elected to split up the landmark interaction over two sets. I would have greatly preferred that all of the landmark interaction had been in the first set. Yeah, the fact the fact that and that's a that's not a design philosophy issue, that's a release cycle issue. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. I've got meat bigger than you. It is it is a thick Israel. Like, don't really want to spend this beam killing this. I guess we'll play this first, and then we'll beam this after. What what bad cards are you playing because of Soraka Kench? Can you explain? Most of most of the landmark interaction is just good cards. Like crumble, crumbles a playable card on its own. I think. Scorch, scorch, Earth, just a generically good card too. Oh, take your time, pal. It's not like I've got better things to do. We could die here to Israel, right? I mean, it's not even just strictly spell mana that makes effects like Crumble be able to be more expensive in Rune Terra, but also the fact that you have a linear progression of resources in Rune Terra. So spell mana factors into it to a degree, but the fact that you're guaranteed to gain another resource every turn in Rune Terra is a big difference coming from a game like Magic, where that's frequently not going to happen. Divergent Path sucks. That's the one that tutors a landmark, right? That card's super reasonable. And that, that's a card that's only going to get better as... So, Trundle Swain, probably a mid-range deck, which I think actually means I want to keep both Bergs. TCG card game players have such weird definitions of a while. Like, how often do you expect things to really change and for a tier list to be updated? Like, I mean, like, you can go and look at the actual data that the tier list is generated from and see that, like, there really isn't a need for an update. 
Like, the, the actual answer is just, like, pull up the actual data, but, like, it's not like, I feel like people, that's why, that, that's always why I don't put last updated things on my website, because people have this really unrealistic expectation of how often card game need to have their deck list updated. I, I promise you the list that were posted a week ago are still relevant now, especially in a game like Runeterra. Runeterra is a game where lists that were posted months ago are generally still relevant. Nah, I think covering random fan-made stuff like that's mostly not not very good content. Any anytime people want to explore other things like that, it has to remember it comes with the cost of content I'm already making. So like spending time making something that's new and probably going to be less popular just isn't a very good 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 use of resources. Hey, Jake. Yeah, VGC is a lot of fun. And the, fa the fact that the Pokemon VGC just lets you, like, paste a rental code in means it has such a low opportunity cost to get into. They have a troll chant here. Brittle steel. Huh? I think I'm going to go ahead and flash freeze to uh, save my 3 3 here. Not only reasonably play Anivia Control, Anivia Control's been like one of the more popular decks in the format again. It's not even just that you can play it, it's just like it's actively good. They're coming, hide! They are coming, hide! Health is getting a little low here. The double, the double scavenger start was a little brutal here. These old eyes still see far and clear. So this is actually kind of punishing for not playing a four drop last turn. Because if I would have played a four drop last turn, I could have played double Tavern Keeper this turn, which would have been really good for us. Ross Kaz, thank you for the very generous tier three sub. I really appreciate the 31 months. It's a long time. Thanks for keeping me around. We're playing Ash there, so you get a Flash Freeze in hand. Uh, I don't think I need to do that. Because, like, I get to... Ugh. Well, that's brutal. Yes, Jubu, they count as one. Because higher higher tier subs get to do things like submit decks and stuff to the queue. That's a uh, that's a pretty decent draw.
It's probably right to do this anyways, but with the emote, definitely. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, dude. A lost battle, not a lost war. It is sweet as in top. Yeah, so so far, this deck does not feel particularly good. Ezreal, Ezreal being a pairing with the frostbite things doesn't really feel like a supernatural supernatural um kind of combined together the ash tends to lead towards a more aggressive gameplay pattern and ezreal's really more of a like mid-range controlling card Yeah, that's a that's a good way to put it too. The Frostbite package likes having board presence, and Ezreal wants you to play a bunch of spells. Is a good, a good summary of some of the awkwardness, I think. Yeah, or like. Like, Tom Kench is a good pairing with the Freezes, or even Demacia is a good pairing with the Freezes, because Demacia has a lot of things like single combat that ends up ends up playing well there. I think I'm just banking spell mana this turn so I can drop Ezreal. You'd never ask. I'm going to end the round here, because I think there's a good chance they have the plus two, plus two to eat my Ezreal. So I'm just going to go ahead and burn their mana here. Two worlds, one balance. Eyes blazing, brightest torches. I find them unworthy. I'm going to go ahead and block here, so that way this dies to a mystic shot down the line. I guess I could beam this here potentially if I wanted. I think. I think we just use beam to finish Shen here. Penguin in the city. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Oh, I could have seared into beam. Yeah, good call. I've got your back. This is uh, this is a free roll, right? So this gets to pop in front of here. We get to flash freeze this. Stalking Wolf is not a playable Rune Terror card. That card's exceptionally bad, even with Ezreal. I also, I also think dropping the curve and just being like this aggro deck just means we're a really bad aggro deck. Like this card, this card is just not like the amount of mana this card takes. Like being like this really resource efficient thing means you don't ki you don't have the tools to kill people quickly, and you also like without Berg you're gonna run out of cards and places. That's true. Uh, not playing this first technically plays around Ranger's Resolve. Oh, take your time, pal. It's not like I've got better things to do. They have a single combat here they're debating using while they have the barrier up. Concerted strike, sure. No way. Show them what we're 
Do I want to hold up spell me in a next turn? I think I do. My shield is yours. No, I don't really think you're missing anything, Ironclad. I agree that, that card is very, very mediocre at best. Okay, that's not bad. Can we beat a rally? I don't I don't think we can, right? So do I do I even try? It is, it is a big berg. Maybe I was supposed to play that out. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Instead of freezing here. You can see that being correct. And yeah, there aren't there aren't a lot of unplayable rune terror cards, but there's definitely a few. And, uh, the uh, stalking wolf, I think, is definitely on that list. Yeah. Well. Yes, I guess if we play if we played Babbling Berg out instead of the Frostbite, there we could have blocked. We could have blocked this the first time through, I suppose. Sure. There you go. There's a there's an edge case. It's playable when you're playing Fiora and you want to give your opponent a unit for your Fiora to kill. I like that. That's adorable. Twisted Fate Gangplank. Um, very likely the Gohard. The Gohard archetype. Probably playing Gangplank instead of Elise. Some of the bigger builds have been playing this a lot. Nah, you just play Mono Fiora HR Beck and you entreat to have six copies of Fiora. I'm going to keep this because it's uh, some good card advantage as the game goes along here. They also sometimes have aggressive starts, so Tavern Keeper sounds good for that. Okay, so warning shot would imply that they are not go hard and they're instead something aggressive, which means keeping this was bad. Full spin. Thanks for the prime. I appreciate that. Welcome. welcome. I mean, like that. So the, the comment in chat, Fiora Ash runs out of cards too quick. That shows, like, a fundamental misunderstanding of, like, what your deck's supposed to be doing. Like, you're not playing a deck like Fiora Ash to keep your hand full of cards. You're playing a deck like Fiora Ash to play and protect the queen and, like, basically combo kill your opponent. So, like, you're right that the aggro combo deck runs out of cards, but that's because the aggro combo deck's not supposed to keep a bunch of cards in its hand. Let's see all. Like not not every deck is designed to have an endless flow of cards in its hand. Generally speaking, it's only mid-range and control decks that really care about maintaining card advantage as the game goes along. One shot, all skill. Can't stop me. Firing. No. Wonder what SI cards they're playing. Never lost a fair game. One. If you don't constantly overflow your hand, are you really playing? I mean, if you're not drawing cards, why bother, right? Why, why'd you even get out of bed?
going, then. Watch the ball, folks. I guess if they pick a card here, we could get into trouble. They could level this, and then we could be in trouble. Yeah, okay. So they're drawing three, four, five cards next turn. All right, well, if they have a salvage or a glimpse, we're gonna... We're gonna be in a little bit of trouble here. Okay, so this hit, fuck. I, I, so I was thinking, I attacked with the Ezreal to start there. No, so I attacked with the Ezreal to start there because I wanted to play around Glimpse. So obviously it feels bad when they have Zap, but I think my play is correct. Like they're almost assuredly playing three copies of Glimpse, right? I think, I think the actual mistake I made this game was the fact that I, uh... The mistake I made this game was that I should have killed their Twisted Fate last turn. Now they pick a carded, so they put a uh, fleeting card back into their deck almost assuredly. Oh, wow. Wow, they had two cards they didn't play. That was more than I was expecting. we're just playing more blockers out to the board. I'm going to be blocking this turn, so I'd rather be blocking with these than anything else. Decent turn for us. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. This, this denies my Ezreal level, which means this no longer kills this. Is is worth noting that our opponent didn't immediately redeploy a level twisted fate though, so we've got that going for us. means that they could kill this with a go hard so maybe it's wrong to play this out but if they don't have a way to kill this ash plus this kills gangplank
So if they have a way to deal combat to deal damage to us pre-combat next turn, we basically just die to gangplank. He's gonna uh, he's gonna level up and shoot all of our stuff. Although I guess he won't he won't make a keg for the turn, so he's only dealing one to everything. So that could maybe be our saving grace. Okay, well, there's there's a keg. Dr. Grindle, thank you for the quarter of year. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for thanks for keeping me around. Um yeah, the way this plays out now, they still don't damage me in level Twisted Fate, or, or level level Gangplank, right? So this is fine. Because that dies to that, so Parlay is no longer killing the thing. This seems, this seems fine. Hey, that's a great draw. Goodbye, Mr. Gangplank. Deal. We are mostly dead to pack your bags, but that's pretty much always the case for my mid range deck, right? There are only 20 cards left in their deck. They're very, very likely to kill us there. Or they have their, have their go hard there. They have six copies and 20 cards. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be done with this one. This deck is, uh... I don't, I don't know. Normally, normally I have, like... Normally I try and give feedback on, like, things we could change or what... What we could do... Do differently to make things better. But, like... I don't, I don't really have any, like, one... One particular thing that I think you could really do to improve this. It just feels kind of disjointed. Like, the game plan, the game, yeah, like, the, the pieces don't feel like they fit together well. I guess this is my summary at the end. What Ezreal is looking to have you do and demands the way in which you build your deck, and what Ash is looking to have you do and demands in which the way you build your deck just don't really fit well together. And I think someone in chat, I'm blanking on who, who said it earlier, uh, summed it up well. The the Frostbite cards really want you to like play to the board and have board presence. And Ezreal wants you to shove a bunch of spells, spells into your deck. Yeah. Yeah, like there's there's like there's some small synergy, like Flash Freeze and Ice Veil Archer level both Ezreal and Ash. But, like, what these champions are looking to do when they're leveled are just very, very different. Is Go Hard too good of a card? No, I don't think that's off base. Uh, Steve Steve Rubin, one of the live live design, live balance people for Runeterra, had mentioned that Go Hard's on their list of things to look at. And I also think, and this is something that's really important to talk about that I think enough people don't talk about enough, is that... A card doesn't have to be too good to be worth rebalancing. Pack your bags in its current state feels really bad to play against and doesn't offer a ton of counterplay for a lot of decks. And that type of effect is something that they've typically shied away from in Rune Terra. 
And I, I really wouldn't be surprised to see them either adjust the damage output on that card or um, just increase the cost of it. I think, I think you could increase the cost of pack your bags to all the way up to five mana and it would probably still be, still be playable. I think another really sweet solution to pack your bags is that they could change it so the amount of damage that pack your bags deals is equal to the number of go hards you've played that game. So like that, that change I really like because it's not a strict downgrade. It's just different. What's up, dude? What's up? No, you cannot have your phone until until we get the new screen protector, bud. You want to watch a show? You can watch on TV. Poor poor Declan has to watch shows on his smart TV like some kind of caveman instead of having a cell phone. There's a math thing on the laptop upstairs. I'm sure mommy would help you set it up, okay? Get out of my closet, dude. It's not a hidey hole. I, Declan Scott. Thank you. I love you, dude. Dumb question. Is the entry one per person for the giveaway or one entry per video? One entry per video, hardware DE. That's clarified in the in the tweet that's linked for reference to. Yeah, I've got I've got some uh infernal Drake Guardians giveaway. I see people, some people using the giveaway command. So for the next two weeks, if you want to enter a giveaway, I've got 20. Drake Guardians to give away courtesy of Riot and the League Partner Program. Just leave a comment on any of my Rune Terror videos posted between December 1st and December uh, 14th. Every comment you leave on a different video is uh, a different a different entry, and I'll pick winners for that in the middle of the month, and you'll get your get your pets given out at the end of the month. Ryan will, Ryan will send them to all the accounts that I collect information from. All right, yeah, let's wrap on, let's wrap.